Good afternoon. Welcome to Liturgy. Please stand. At this time, please take a moment to safely greet those around you. Good afternoon. Our gathering hymn this afternoon is number 463, The King of Love, My Shepherd Is. Father. Good evening to you all. Good evening, Father. We gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. I don't know whether I'll be able to say the Mass today. I'm looking at how beautiful your church looks. <laughs> that has taken much more of my attention. We gather this fourth Sunday of Lent to celebrate the richness and the goodness of God mercy to us in our lives. And the challenge of the reading is that we reciprocate that in the way we live our lives. For those times that we are paid to do that, let us all mind our sin. I confess to Almighty oh God, God that I have greatly sinned in my soul. God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to the last Amen. Let us pray. O God, who through your word reconciled the human race to yourself in a wonderful way, grant, we pray, that with strong devotion and eager faith, the Christian people may hasten toward the solemn celebrations to come. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, Live and reign in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second book of Chronicles. In those days, all the princes of Judah the priest and the people added infidelity to infidelity, practicing all of the abominations of the nations and polluting the Lord's temple, which he had consecrated in Jerusalem. Early and often did the Lord, the God of our fathers, send his messages to him, for he had compassion for his people and his dwelling place. 
but they mocked the messengers of God, despised his warnings, and scoffed at his prophets, until the anger of the Lord against his people was so inflamed that there was no remedy. Their enemies burnt the house of God, tore down the walls of Jerusalem, set all its palaces afire, and destroyed all its precious objects. Those who escaped the sword were carried captive to the Babylonians, where they became servants of the kings of the Chaldeans and his sons, until the kingdom of the Persians came to power. All this was to fulfill the word of the Lord spoken by Jeremiah. Until the land has retrieved its lost Sabbaths, during all the time it lies waste, it shall, it shall have rest while 70 years are fulfilled. In the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, in order to fulfill the word that the Lord had spoken by Jeremiah, the Lord inspired King Cyrus of Persia to issue his proclamation throughout his kingdom, both by word of mouth and in writing. Thus says Cyrus, king of Persia, all the kingdoms of the earth, the Lord, the God of heaven, has given to me, and he has also charged me to build him a house in Jerusalem, which is in Judah. Whoever, therefore, among you belongs to any part of these people, let him go up, and may his God be with him. The word of the Lord. Let my tongue be silenced if I ever forget you. Let my tongue be silenced if I ever forget you. By the streams of Babylon we sat and wept. When we remembered Zion on the aspens of that land, we hung up our harps. Let my tongue be silenced if I ever forget you. For there are captors asked of us the lyrics of our songs and our despoilers urged us to be joyous sing for us the songs of zion let my tongue be silenced if i ever forget you how could we sing a song of the Lord in a foreign land. If I forget you, Jerusalem, may my right hand be forgotten. Let my tongue be silenced if I ever forget you. May my tongue cleave to my palate if I remember you not. If I place not Jerusalem ahead of my joy, let my tongue be silenced if I ever forget you.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, God who is rich in mercy because of the great love he had for us, even when we were dead in our transgressions, brought us to life with Christ. By grace you have been saved. Raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavens in Christ Jesus. That in the, all the ages to come, he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in his kindness to us in Jesus Christ. For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from you. It is the gift of God. It is not from the works, so no one may boast. For we are his handiwork, created in Christ Jesus for the good works that God has prepared in advance, that we should live in them. The word of the Lord. to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. God so loved the world that he gave So everyone who believes in him might have eternal life. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to Nicodemus, Just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, so that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him might not perish, but might have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him will not be condemned, but whoever does not believe has already been condemned because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the verdict, that the light came into the world, but people preferred the darkness to the light because their works were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light, and does not come toward the light, so that his works might not be exposed. But whoever lives the truth comes to light, so that his works may be clearly seen as done in God. The Gospel of the Lord. Good afternoon once again. Well, who is this guy who is up at the altar today? My name is Father Anthony Mpaji. Don't mind about the second word. Just call me Father Anthony. And right now I am assigned at St. Boniface Parish in Lunenburg, where I've been a pastor for over eight years. I'm doing a pulpit switch today with Father Tim because many years ago, Father Tim was an associate or curate at St. Boniface Parish. And his name is still spoken of after so many years when he was still a young priest. Many of the, our parishioners still 
remember a lot of the work that he did as he was starting off his ministry as a priest. So every now and then uh, during special seasons, Lent and Advent, we invite different clergy who have made an impact on the people of our parish. And when I was suggesting some of the names, his name came up right up top. And so we said, we shall invite him. And so he said, go fill in. That's it. Just for today. Go fill in over there. And then, uh, so we are happy to have him over there. When was the last time in your life you were a recipient of kindness and mercy? A gratuitous kindness and mercy that threw you off in your own life. That kind of mercy and kindness that is totally undeserved, that you felt so unworthy of. Think about a time that, that happened to you. A kind of mercy and goodness that unexpectedly saved you in your life. Such undeserved mercy and kindness is never forgotten when it happens to each one of us in our own lives. I can compare it to a kind of mercy and kindness that a prisoner who is on death row, whose life has pretty much been, you know, set that he's going to end, experiences when out of the blue, he is told without any effort of his own that he has been set free. That's the kind of mercy that I'm speaking about. Or a kindness of mercy that an exile longs for to go back in his or her homeland and refuses to let go of everything that reminds them of their home even in the most trying of situations. That is what the psalmist in today's reading kind of says, as he says, let my tongue be silent if I ever forget you. Remembering what God and his kindness has done to the, that person who has given him mercy and kindness. And he wishes on himself a self-curse if he ever forgets the kindness and mercy of God. Let my tongue be silent if I ever get you. A kindness of mercy that does not look at one's sins, one's past, and disregards everything that chokes us in our own lives, especially our past. And this can be also, ex you know, an example of this is that, that son who comes and the prodigal father forgives him and doesn't even look at what he has done in the past. He says, get the best robe, you know, suit him up. Let us celebrate that my son has come doesn't mention anything about his past. That's the kind of mercy that I'm speaking about. If you have ever experienced that kind of mercy in your life, then you have come a little close to understand God's mercy and kindness that he has for us in our own lives. That saves us. That today we are challenged to reciprocate to others in our life. That's the kind of mercy that we come to ponder about today. It is totally a free gift, undeserved that we feel unworthy of. And this is what explains God's mercy and love for us in our own lives. Understanding God is always to see him in this light as the source of undeserved kindness and mercy in our lives. The first reading today speaks about God's kindness and mercy that the people of Israel kind of felt. They were beyond repair. Because of the enormity of their sins, they did not listen to the messengers, the prophets that he sent them, and God's anger flares up, and he says they are going to be destroyed, and they destroyed, they are. Everything falls apart in their own lives. But even then, even when God's anger is at its utmost, he always leaves a window of hope for us in our lives. And that window of hope is because he is a God of mercy and life and hope. Beside being a, a God who is a God of justice, he always leaves a window of hope that we may come back in his life. And so the people that accept him return home through the, the kindness of that king Cyrus who have, we have had mentioned in, this, in the first reading. And that is how God saves them. God's kindness and mercy always lifts us up. It changes our lives. The question before us who listen to this reading is, do we see our lives as a consequence of God's mercy and kindness and grace? Or are we sometimes entitled? Do I see everything that I am as a result of my own genius, my own merit, my own effort, and do not see 
the greater force at work in my life or what others contribute to who I am. Sometimes that's how we get divisions in our society because we are not grateful enough for what God does in our lives. What defines gratefulness in your life? What is it that you're grateful for? Who are you grateful for? Is God one of them? The finest hour of God's kindness and mercy is seen on the cross. For God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son so that everyone who believes in him might not perish but might have eternal life. God is always about life. That's why he sends the only son that he has that each one of us may not perish and have life. To give what one only has totally away is a sign of true kindness and mercy that is unseen. And that is what God is each one of us for us. His son is lifted up on the cross as we have heard in the gospel reading that others may benefit. That is God's nature. Always doing things that others may benefit. Nothing for self. That others may not perish, may not be condemned. Who of us can do that? Who of us does things without payback? A little bit of, you know, something is done in return for me. That is what God is for each one of us in our life. And so at the end of my reflection, very short, I ask myself the following question. What will heal the world of today that is so fractured as we hear about it on the news everywhere you turn? We ask ourselves, what will we do to overcome hate and dislike, divisions and indifference towards others that we see in our world today? What will save our world and remove the darkness of sin that we perpetually experience in our lives? The only way forward, the readings tell us today, the only way forward is to put into practice the kindness and mercy that God gives us in our daily lives. I must see myself as a recipient of God's mercy and grace and kindness, and I need to reciprocate that in the way I live my life. That's the only way the world around us will change. So it is our duty, it is our challenge, all of us who listen to this gospel, to go out and be like God to others. For God to love is to give totally. That should be the motto of a Christian. Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. stand and profess our faith, for we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, God of the Father, which all our ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, who God is not me, but substantial the Father, to him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. Father, the Holy Spirit, who was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. He rose again in the third day, according to the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and he seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. The Father and the Son is adored and glorified. We have spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and Catholic Church.
blessing that God is in our minister and lift up to him some of our prayers. Please respond, Lord, hear our prayer. For our call to stewardship, that we may be good stewards of the gifts that God has given us by addressing the challenges of our parish community and by responding generously with time, talent, and treasure, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Pope Francis, on the anniversary of his election as Pope, that God will sustain him in his ministry inspire his teaching, and help him to lead the church to greater faith and love, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a greater realization of God's goodness, that we may recognize everything as a gift from God and open our hearts to accept the additional gifts that God has for us, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to the pandemic, that God may restore to health all who are sick with the virus, give consolation and support to all the families who have lost loved ones, guide and inspire all who work to end this virus, and give our leaders the wisdom to make the right decisions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For successful distribution of the COVID vaccine, that God will guide the delivery of vaccines to where it is needed, and give strength to all who are administering to it. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who are in need of healing or peace in their lives, especially members of our parish family, that God's gracious spirit will give their bodies and minds comfort and wholeness. We especially pray for Dot Kelly, Eddie Fitzgerald, Maggie Wilkins, Barbara Charbonneau, Andrea Lloyd, Joan Swenson, Joanne O'Brien, Ed Benoit, Joe, Ted, Maureen, Jackie, Joe Gaze, Conrad, Kaylee, Gail, Nick Maringolo, Matt Wigan, Kathy, Shirley Mazina, Ray, Hannah, Ava, Betty, Jerry, and all those who have been impacted by abuse in any form, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For our beloved dead, that we may be brought into the eternal peace of God's presence through Jesus, who is the resurrection and the life, for all who have died this week, and especially for Barbara Harrington, Jad Viga, and Z. Lava Chalek, David Lamakia, and Louis Roy, whom we remember at this Eucharist, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For our own prayers, we hold in the silence of our hearts, and those prayers and people who are written in our book of intentions and never forgotten by God. We pray. Lord hear our prayer. We conclude our prayers with the prayer of Mother Mary as we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Our hymn during the preparation of gifts is Amazing Grace. <clears throat>
was grace that taught my heart to fear and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear the hour I first believed. The Lord has promised good to me. His word, my hope, secure. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of your name, for our good and the good of all this holy church. We place before you with joy these offerings which bring eternal remedy, O Lord, praying that we may both faithfully revere them, present them to you as fitting for the salvation of all the world. We ask this for Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. You see, right and just, our duty and our salvation, always as if we have to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, we have given your children a sacred time for renewing and purifying of their hearts, that freed from disordered affections, they may so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to the things that eternally endure. Through the angels and the saints, we praise you without end as we are created. <coughs> Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who Lord, the font of our life, all holiness. <coughs> Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending your Spirit upon them like the dewfall. They may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time as we pray, it is willingly be passion. Jesus took bread, giving thanks, he broke it. He gave to his friends and disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. For this is my body, be given up for you. In a 
Tim Lewin Cup was ended with the top of the Indian Chant and Train. The game is turned and tight as train. Take this, all of you drink them. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and the covenant, poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sin, purely in the name of you. As we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks to God as worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humble, we pray, for the taking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring us the fullness of charity. Lord Francis, our Pope, Robert, our Bishop, all the clergy. Remember our family members, our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them now in the light of your faith. Have mercy on us, so we pray. The blessed by the name of God, the blessed apostles, all the saints who pleased you throughout the ages, that you may merit to declare us eternal life, may praise and glorify you. Through your Son, Jesus Christ. To him we kneel in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Grant us peace in our families and our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be free from sin, Save from all distress for the blessed hope, the coming of our King, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, take your apostles, which I read in my book, I give you. Look not on our sins, but the faith of your church. Grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, for you will live forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Look one another.
Jesus, the Lamb of God. Glory. Y mucho esto lo decimos todo. Wow. Blessed are those who call the Sabbath of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy to change into my roots, but only say the word. My Jesus, I believe that you are in the blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I long for you and my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you have already come, I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. The procedure to receive communion is the following. Uh, the usher, an usher is going to come to your pew and sanitize your hands. We're not going to come forward with our mask on to receive the Eucharist in, the, in our hands and then sit on the side, leave our mask, receive the Holy Host, and then return through the side aisle to our pews. There were people of all ages gathered round the gable wall, poor and humble men and women, little children that you call. We are gathered. And our hearts are just the same, filled with joy at such a vision as we praise your name. Golden Rose, Queen of all. Trouble see 
queen of peace and the lamb will conquer and the woman clothed in the sun will shine her light on everyone and the lamb will conquer and the woman clothed in the sun will shine her light on We want to thank Father Anthony and Paji for sharing the Eucharist with us today, the gift of Christ. He's part of this program we call Exchange Your Pastor Day. <laughs> so we let him lend, we lend him Father Tim to Lunenburg and he came to Jefferson and we're very thankful for that. Um, from the things that, that we want to, uh, so thank you Father. <laughs> Come again. <laughs> uh, from the things that, that I want you to keep in mind is that our Lenten activities continue. Uh, so I encourage you to participate of them. They're, they, we prepare them with a lot of love for you. And the one coming this week is really good. Uh, so we're going to have Monsignor Monteluso coming over on Wednesday to talk to us about Eucharist and breaking the bread together. How important is that for our faith life? So it's going to be at 6.30 here on Wednesday. And for those who are watching us on TV, don't worry. We're going to be reaching you too, and it's going to be transmitted uh, through online. Okay? So, great. Awesome. Oh, and also, you're welcome to participate in our uh, Way of the Cross prayer. That is on Friday at 6. <clears throat> o 
For God, who enlightened everyone who comes into the world, illuminate our hearts, we pray, with the splendor of your grace, that we always ponder what is worthy and pleasing to your majesty and love you in all sincerity. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's bow our heads and pray for God's blessing. Look upon those who call to you, O Lord, and sustain the weak. Give life by your unfailing light to those who walk in the shadow of death and bring those rescued by your mercy from every evil to reach the highest good. We ask this to Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless us all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass has ended. We remain in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Have a good week, everyone. You too, Father. Our final hymn of praise is Glory in the Cross. <coughs> Let us ever glory in the cross of Christ, our salvation and our hope. Let us bow in homage to the Lord of life, who has broken to make us whole. There is no greater love as blessed as this, to lay down one's life for a friend. Let us ever glory in the cross of Christ and the triumph of God's great love. Let us make our journey to the cross of Christ who surrendered glory and grace. To become a servant of the great and small, that all people may know God's face. Through his birth was divine, he knelt as a slave, to wash common dust from our feet. Let us ever glory in the cross of Christ, and the triumph of God's great love.